Holland's Aerospace is just one more example that you cannot predict who is going to succeed in spaceflight based on the past, based on what has happened already with that company, with those companies' successes. Space is just not that kind of predictable routine thing where we can say this company has done this in the past, therefore this company can do this in the future. I wish it was that way, but it's not because space is much more complex. And right now we're going to talk about spacesuits because it was reported today by multiple sources that Collins Aerospace is in talks with NASA to back out of their contract that they were given two years ago, actually June of 2022, along with uh, Axiom Space to create spacesuits for NASA and for other users. So essentially, Collins and, and Axiom would own these spacesuits and then NASA would rent them for space station, for gateway, for going back to the surface of the moon. Uh, it is really cool that we are at a point where we're thinking about future spacesuits, where we've been working on future spacesuits, but that's the thing. We've been actually working on future spacesuits for years. And by we, I mean NASA, actually. NASA has been working on this technology on the next generation spacesuits for literally many years. And they had so much trouble that they decided to create this program to give it to the commercial industry, literally give it. NASA gave that technology to Axiom, to Collins, to either continue that work or do their own thing so that the technology could be developed to fruition and become something that is actually used by NASA and hopefully other users. My name is Laura Forsick. I'm the executive director of Astrolytical, which is a space consulting firm. We help companies and organizations to grow in space. And so this is exactly the kind of thing that we look at. We look to see where is the industry? And unfortunately, with a lot of these things, there's not a whole lot of commercial industry. The customer is government for the most part. And you can argue that there is going to be private commercial industry that is around spacesuits. For example, we'll talk about SpaceX in the later part of this video. But for right now, the main customer is going to be government. So the main customer for Collins and for Axiom is government missions, government missions to the International Space Station, government missions to Gateway, government missions to private space stations even. Um, government missions to the surface of the moon for the Artemis program. And then you can look ahead to the private space stations. Is there going to be a need for spacesuits on private space stations? Is there going to be private EVAs conducted? I mean, possibly, hopefully, likely at some point, yes. And I'm going to talk about the difference between a space suit, the way we think about a traditional space suit and a uh, private space capsule, because um, somebody's working on that. So I'll talk about that later. But basically, Collins and Axiom had this opportunity to take already worked on technology that NASA has been working on for many years and either, you know, improve upon it and make it happen or develop their own thing entirely, start from scratch. But I know from my colleagues, I've never personally worked on spacesuits, but I know from my colleagues who have that it is difficult. Gloves, especially like the dexterity of your hands. I mean, there's a reason why EVAs hurt astronauts especially the handwork, especially the gloves. And then we've had all these problems right now as I'm speaking, like they're trying to evaluate the uh, spacesuit, they're trying to evaluate the EVA that was canceled on the International Space Station today because of a water leak issue. Like we are just continually having issues with the existing spacesuits. They work, but they, they are not perfect and they don't fit everybody. We remember a few years ago when there was a spacewalk canceled uh, because one of the spacesuits didn't fit the women, the woman right. Um, the, I'm on the smaller side. And so there is no spacesuit, no existing NASA spacesuit that would fit me because I'm petite. And so um, when we think about the future of, you know, human spaceflight, putting aside even government spaceflight for the moment, but just even human spaceflight, the very fact that governments are starting to open it up to people of all sizes and private customers, private individuals, they could be any shape and size. And so you want a spacesuit if you are going to go the direction of private EVA in space or private EVA on the surface of the moon, you want those spacesuits available to fit the customer, assuming the customer is physically fit to do those activities. So it was very, very difficult for Axiom and Collins to even take on this task, let alone take it on in a combined budget because NASA only gave them a little bit of a budget. It's a $3.5 billion total budget, but that includes like all the extra awards that could be awarded uh, through 2035. 
So, you know, it's so they didn't get three point five billion dollars to start. They got a s amount of money to start that was not disclosed, and that was it. And so the problem that Collins ran into is that they were running out of money. They they actually I think had over budgeted. They'd overspent their own money that they had put aside for this because it wasn't just NASA money. Axiom and Collins were both putting in their own money for this, and Collins was just like, "We're spending too much money." And there's an obvious parallel here between the spacesuit issue and the Boeing Starliner issue, which are completely different things. But Boeing had a similar take where <laughs> Boeing was like, this is a fixed firm price contract. We are overspending. We, we messed up in here and we're delaying here. And we are overspending so much that we just might even just throw in the towel and give up on Starliner. That was the thing that they were talking about a couple of years ago. They didn't give up on Starliner. Starliner has its own issues right now. This is not a video about that, but the parallels are there, right? I'm not saying Colin's spacesuits were as problematic as <laughs> Starliner is proving to be, but the parallels are there. If a private company is spending too much of its own money, it has to make that business decision, whether it's going to get that return on investment from that, you know, government contract, but then its own initial investment from, you know, its own budget. Um, and Collins is making that decision that it's not, it's not worth it. And both of these teams, by the way, were really qualified. Collins was a partnership between ILC Dover and Oceaneering. ILC Dover is the company that um, comes from Playtex that built the Apollo uh, spacesuits back in 1969. So very well qualified. Axiom also equally qualified, even though they're a newcomer, because they were partnering with David Clark Company, KBR, and Paragon Space Development Corporation, all very well experienced. And David Clark Company is another one with a long history in spacesuits, decades long. And so these were very well qualified company teams. I would say that Collins was the favorite simply because of that Apollo spacesuit connection. Um, so they had that experience in the team. Uh, obviously, the people who made the Apollo spacesuits are probably long retired or deceased, but they had that background where you can say they made these spacesuits. They made these spacesuits. I think they also made the space shuttle spacesuits, by the way, the ones that are still operational today. And so if you're going to choose the newcomer partnered with you know companies that have experience versus the very, very well experienced companies, you're going to obviously choose the well experienced ones to be the front runner, but they haven't been. And again, the parallel is there with start with um commercial crew program where boeing was the obvious front runner when the contracts were awarded to boeing and spacex because boeing had decades of experience in human spaceflight and spacex was the relative newcomer and then spacex went ahead and beat you know it's beat going to the, to the space station with dragon in 2020 and starliner just now is having its first mission to the space station crewed mission i should say and so the parallels are there. And so you really can't say because this company has decades of experience in human spaceflight, they're going to be able to be the front runner or their ultimate winner here. Um, you know, Boeing obviously is hanging in there with Starliner. Collins is backing out. So what's next when it comes to spacesuits? We need spacesuits. We cannot keep operating with the older ones. They're giving us more and more problems. Uh, two spacewalks have been canceled this week, one due to a spacesuit discomfort issue and one due to a water leak. And if you remember a few years ago, there's, there were, this is not a, a new issue with the water leaks. There, there was a water leak during an EVA that water was going into the visor. And that must be absolutely terrifying to be out in space and like thinking that you're going to drown because water's going into your visor. So like we really do need new spacesuits. Um, of course, the Russians have theirs and the Chinese have theirs. And like, I'm not talking about government spacesuits here. I'm talking about NASA transitioning from government led spacesuits to private sector. So a lot of people have been talking about the obvious, uh, the obvious choice here if you want a dissimilar redundancy, a second provider is SpaceX because SpaceX has already been de designing and building its own spacesuit for the Polaris program. Polaris program, uh, Polaris Dawn is scheduled to launch in July. The exact date is not set yet, but they are going to do the first private EVA. At least that's the plan. And so they are going to be testing this brand new SpaceX spacesuit, which has not been funded by the government. So it's completely built in house. You're not going to have just Axiom's spacesuit as the only thing. Um, you actually have this spacesuit now that SpaceX is developing. I think there's slight differences. I think there needs to be modifications to work on a space station, but also it's not meant for the moon, right? And so to back up a little bit, 
at first, NASA had just awarded these two contracts to Axiom and Collins on spacesuits. Then they tried to differentiate. So Axiom was going to take the lead on the lunar spacesuits, where Collins was going to take the lead on the new space station spacesuits. And then about a year ago, uh, they they did a cross uh Cross promotions not the term. They decided to hedge their bets and, and and say, okay, maybe we shouldn't break it up like that in case one goes under. So they actually had Axiom also working on spacesuits for space station, and they had Collins also working on spacesuits for lunar purposes. And my background is in lunar regolith, and so I'm biased, but I think it's probably harder to design a spacesuit for the surface of the moon because of the sharp, jagged awfulness of the lunar regolith. It gets into everything. It is really not good to breathe. It is not good for joints of spacesuits or joints for anything. The Apollo astronauts talked about it causing a cough. Like it's just not a good scenario to be in the lunar environment with a spacesuit that's not designed for that. So you really do need to design it really robustly for the lunar environment if you're going to be doing EVAs on the surface of the moon. I don't know if it's easier per se to design a spacesuit for just microgravity conditions. Um, you know, again, I'm biased, so I think it probably is. I think Axiom's probably doing the harder job right now, primarily designing for the moon, and maybe they can have an easier time saying, oh, we can also use this for space station. Um, Maybe, I don't know. So we don't have a lot of details about Axiom spacesuit. In fact, there was a photo shoot last year, I think, and it was it, it just like, it was like a play pretend spacesuit. It wasn't the real thing. <laughs> so, oh, don't know. Um, Collins at least actually had uh, pictures of its spacesuits in a press release they put out at the end of January this year where they did a zero G flight, a par parabolic flight to test it in microgravity. Um, so at least we know what those spacesuits generally look like based on that prototype, at least. Axiom, we assume, is doing better than Collins, but we don't have a whole lot of updates on the Axiom spacesuit either. What about other human spaceflight providers? Well, we've got the two suborbital ones, Virgin Galactic Blue Origin, and of course Blue Origin's working on New Glenn, which presumably will eventually launch humans as well. We don't see those companies building spacesuits that are truly spacesuits. If you remember, Unilever partnered with Virgin Galactic not they're calling it a spacesuit, but it's not a spacesuit. They designed really pretty looking flight suits. And Blue Origin did the same thing. Blue Origin designed pretty looking flight suits. And I myself have a few flight suits from Space Camp uh, that um, I occasionally wear at Halloween or something. Like, you, you can't, you're not going to go to space in those. They're not going to protect you from an airless environment. So we really don't have other examples other than SpaceX of a company designing a spacesuit. But all in all, this is not a disaster. Like, we do have a backup, right? So we do have, we have, we have Axiom. And if need be, we have SpaceX. And if need be, if worst case scenario, we still have the spacesuits that are used today on the International Space Station. They are not compliant with what we want to do in the future, but um, they're good enough for the moment. So like, it's not a disaster. Human space is not going to end because Collins is backing out. This is why NASA chooses at least two providers for these contracts. You want the redundancy. And Specifically, they, they call it re dissimilar redundancy, where they want two independently developed systems, um, whether we're talking about a crew capsule or whether we're talking about spacesuits or anything else. You better believe that this is going to be talked about and brought up as a concern at the next NASA NASA Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, ASAP, I always have to look up the acronym. Um, they've been talking about this for a few years. They've been a little bit worried about the spacesuit situation. I know Sandy Magnus, who is a former astronaut as well as on the ASAP, she's expressed concern about the slow progress of spacesuit development. Um, so like this is definitely a concern. Um, it's not a game changer. It's not like the end of the world. NASA is not saying yet whether or not they're going to recompete the contract if Collins backs out, but I think they should personally. <laughs> I, I think it's not a bad thing. It's a relatively small contract comparatively. I do want to quickly mention that there are other concepts out there. Genesis Aerospace, which was announced as a partner in the Orbital Reef Commercial Space Station CLD, um, they are designing a single person spacecraft. That's what they're calling it, which is, you know, arguably spacesuits are single person spacecraft, but this is specifically like looks like a spacecraft rather than it's, it's not like, it's not form fitting. It really just looks like 
it looks like R2D2, honestly. <laughs> it looks like R2D2 and you're like, you are fit in there as a person um, with, with little robotic arms. Like that's what it looks like to me. And I think that's an interesting concept. I don't know whether that's better or worse or what the pros and cons are to having your own individual spacecraft versus a spacesuit formed individual spacecraft. You know what I mean? And I don't know if anyone else is working on that concept. But like, that's not what NASA's asking for. So that's great for commercial industry. That's great for, you know, Orbital Reef to see if this concept works out, if they want to do servicing or private EVAs through a single person spacecraft. But NASA's asking for a spacesuit. So somebody needs to deliver a spacesuit.